hey guys how are you so i am here to tell you about crr and slr and uh, how rbi uses crr and slr to you know control inflation in the indian economy so crr stands for cash reserve ratio what is cash reserve ratio cash reserve ratio is uh, that amount friends which you know the uh, commercial banks the scheduled commercial banks have to keep with the rbi and this is the percentage as a percentage of net time and demand liabilities now friends i would like to tell you what is net time and demand uh, ndtl you can say net demand and time liabilities or net time and demand liabilities you can say anything so what is ndtl net demand and time liabilities two things are here in it demand liabilities time liabilities what is demand liability suppose you open a savings account okay so you get around 3.5% interest 4% interest suppose you open a current account in current account you get 0% interest because for current account even in some cases uh, people who open current account in banks they have to pay to maintain the current account so these current account and saving accounts these are actually demand deposits why demand deposits because you can withdraw money from them according to your priorities at the money in those accounts is at your disposal whereas when we talk about time deposits time deposits is fixed for a particular time limit you know you cannot uh, withdraw a time uh, deposit before the specified amount of time for which you have deposited the money so obviously suppose in a bank on a particular day say on a in a bank on a particular day you are submitting some amount of money say a total amount of money submitted in a particular bank say sbi on a particular day is say 130 crores and obviously some amount of money is taken out from that bank on that particular day suppose 30 crores is taken out so obviously on that particular day 130 crore rupees was submitted and 30 crores was taken out so 130 crore came in the bank and 30 crore was taken out so what was the net inflow of money in that bank on that particular day it was 130 minus 30 because 130 came in and 30 came out so 100 crore so on that particular day ndtl that is net demand and time liability is 100 crore rupees as simple as that so this is net time and de net demand and time liability now when we talk about uh, indian economy and for determining the value of crr and slr and for implementing it net demand and time liability is calculated for a period of a fortnight that is 2 weeks that is 14 weeks so every friday ndtl is fixed and that ndtl remains valid for 2 weeks and after again 14 days when next friday comes ndtl is again calculated so obviously if any bank is not adhering to the limits of cash reserve ratio or statutory liquidity ratio then of in a, of as a percentage of ndtl then he has to pay a penalty on it okay friends so this was ndtl and what we talked about we talked about csr crr cash reserve ratio is that amount of money which banks keep with the rbi theek hai or and it is expressed as a percentage of ndtl and statutory liquidity ratio is that amount of money which the banks keep itself in the form of first cash second gold and third government accrued securities now friends what's the difference between crr and slr in crr all the money has to be kept in the form of cash with the rbi so obviously the whole money is deposited with the rbi the money is not in circulation the money is not an in investment so no amount of interest is being received on the crr deposited but we when we talk about slr in slr if whatever percentage we are keeping as cash we are not going to get any return on it suppose a fraction of the slr we are keeping in gold so obviously if the prices of gold increase we are going to get profit and if the prices of gold decrease we are going to get a loss in the slr and if we if the banks you know invest their monies in gom invest their slr money in government approved securities and obviously they are going to get a return of around 8 to 9% because you know government pays an interest of 8 to 9% on the securities that it issues so this is the difference between crr and slr friends but you know you need to understand one thing that uh, how crr and slr is going to control the inflation in the economy using crr and slr rbi can use to control inflation in the economy how suppose for example you know crr is 4% and slr is 20% it is changed in every bi monthly you know monetary policy review by the monetary policy committee so if after every 2 months this thing is changing suppose 
at present the CRR is 4%, SLR is 20%, and I make the CRR as 10% and SLR as 30%. So previously when it was CRR was 4% and SLR was 20%, that 24% of the money was not you know circulated by the banks forward. Only 76% of the money was circulated by the banks. But when the CRR is increased to 10% and the SLR is increased to 20%, so obviously 30% of the money becomes dormant. Okay, and how much money we can invest now? Uh, the money that can be invested now is around 70%. Okay, so CRR was increased to uh, 10%, and SLR was uh, I'm sorry, SLR previously was 20%, and now we increase SLR from 20 to 30. So now SLR is 30, CRR is 10, so 30 plus 10, 40%. The banks cannot lend forward, so banks are left with only 60% of the money. So if the banks are less are left with less amount of money to move forward in the economy so obviously they have to maintain their profit margin so they are going to lend that remaining 60 percent at a higher rate of interest previously when they were lending 76 percent of the money they had a lot of money so they decided the rates accordingly but now when they are left with only 60 percent of the money to lend obviously the lending rates are going to increase and if the lending rates are going to increase then obviously friends people will not be very much interested in taking loans for example when 24 percent of the money that is 4 percent crr and 20 percent slr was with the banks 76 percent was giving so suppose at that point of time the car loan you know the interest rate levied on the car loan was 13 percent let's say i'm assuming now 40 percent is dormant 60 percent has to be lent so the RBI, the banks are obviously going to increase their lending rate. So suppose they increase their lending rate from 13% to 22%. That is car loan, 13% to 22%. So obviously now the interest that needs to be paid by the consumer becomes more. So consumers will be less willing to buy a car. So this is how by increasing the CRR and SLR, obviously, you know, uh, the booming inflation can be controlled because obviously the interest rate will be more interest rate will be more then obviously borrowing by the people from the banks will be less and if the borrowing will be less spending will be less spending will be less then ob obviously the inflation will fall similar case we comes in the case of deflation in this deflation condition the prices are going back so if the prices are going back the prices are going downward they are dipping downwards what we need to do in that case <coughs> we need to reduce the CRR and SLR. So suppose CRR is reduced from 4% to 2% and SLR is reduced from 20% to 15%. Now previously 26% then sorry 24% was dormant and 76% was available for lending. Now only 2% CRR is there and 15% SLR is there so 2 plus 15 is 70%. 17% that is around 83% of the amount of money is available with banks to lend so obviously banks have more money to lend so if they have more money to lend obviously they are going to slash down their interest rates and if the interest rates will be slashed down people will obviously be borrowing more and if they will be borrowing more there will be more economic activity okay for example now the car loan will come down from 13 percent to say nine percent and more and more people will be you know purchasing cars so obviously the demands for car will increase if the demands for car will increase you know the car companies will start manufacturing more cars and if the car continue for start manufacturing more cars obviously the employment of people in those factories will increase and a lot of things will happen those employed people will get salaries from that salaries they are going to purchase goods from the markets those goods will give indirect access to the government it becomes a full cycle so this is the way crr and slr are affecting the monetary policy no this crr and slr can be used to know tackle inflation and uh, these things are done by the monetary policy of the rbi so i hope friends that this lecture was useful to you please do comment in the video and tell me how you whether you like this lecture or not have a good day bye